Thank you, Luke. Were they great? Was Luke great? Kim, Caroline? Uh, I'd like to make a, a short announcement before I begin my, my uh, hour-long hour speech <laughs> that I've condensed about seven or eight minutes. But uh, uh, Luke mentioned his fiancé. Just to let you know that Luke is getting married this August in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Sarah, right there, raise your, raise your, raise your hand. That's his fiancé. Uh, they met on the campus of uh, uh, Ohio State University, or better known as The Ohio State. So, in fact, we're very fortunate to have her a part of the family. So, yeah. As I was... Um, as I was getting uh, dressed this evening for this, this event, I, I realized, I came to the realization that men, we have it so much easier because the invitation says um, business attire. So what does that mean? For men, it's easy. Is it a white shirt, blue shirt, uh, uh, a tie, uh, a, a traditional long tie, or maybe you go with the... Uh, Maybe go with the uh, the classic uh, bow tie. I have a bow tie, I have a, but I mostly wore this. I decided to wear this tonight. Uh, otherwise, uh, I thought about uh, dressing up like a uh, Hispanic Phil McCurry, but I decided maybe I better not do that or not. So, <laughs> so those of you who don't know who Phil McCurry is, he's a brilliant attorney with Kelly Hart. Great guy. I, let me get serious. I, I am so honored to be standing before you tonight. It's a, it's a, it's a great night. Uh, I've attended this dinner for 12 years, and it never occurred to me that one day I would be the honoree. I'm humbled and touched beyond words. I'm also a little bit embarrassed. Now, my wife has mentioned that I need to get over it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying, so therefore I am, I am over it. And to speak of an embarrassment, I'm also a little bit embarrassed because I did, had not heard about the MCA, this organization, until I was asked to, uh, I was, until I was approached to serve uh, on the board as a representative of the Fort Worth Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And Rosa Navajar was the president and CEO at the time, and she, she asked me to, uh, I guess she nominated me, recommended me, so for that, thank you, Rosa. That's a... Uh, uh, it's made that connection with MCA, and I'm forever grateful for that. <laughs> Through these 12 years, and my deep involvement with the MCA has become an organization that lives in my heart. Within these 12 years, I served on the board for eight years, and I'm proud to say I was uh, presiding board chair for two of those years. As I prepared for this evening, I reflected on MCA in my own life and how the two have been intertwined. Their mission has become a mantra. In fact, I think I've heard that earlier tonight. I think, uh, uh, I think Caroline may have said mantra, and that's, that, is, that is a good word, that I have adopted for my mindset and made a mission for my life. My intent is not to provide you with some profound insight on what it means to be inclusive, but to convey to you my passion for MCA and, and this organization and how has it made, it's made me a better person. Months ago, several months ago, Dr. Cheryl Kimberling approached me at another uh, uh, gala event and she had mentioned to me that the dinner committee uh, had selected me as the honoree for this year's uh, award. As you can imagine, I paused for a second, and it was really, uh, it was almost, it was almost surreal. Of course, she, she says, you cannot, if I'm not mistaken, she said, you cannot, with my silence, she said, you cannot not accept this award. <laughs> but, you know, uh, and I did say, I did say yes. And for that, I want to thank Cheryl, I want to thank the dinner committee, and I want to thank the MCA board. So thank you very much. I 
I would not be here tonight without the support of several people in my life. First of all, my wife, Elia. My, my son, Michael. My daughter, Anna. And other family members who are here to support me as they have in so many other ways. Also, thank you, thank you to my business partners, Hong Chin, Paul Padilla. Hong, raise your hand, Paul. My colleagues, my friends, so many of whom are here tonight. I sincerely appreciate your support, not just tonight, but through the years as well. As most of you know, there are a number of ways in which the Multicultural Alliance reaches into a variety of audiences. We've heard the impact that Table Talk and Camp Community continue to have on Kim and Caroline. It stays with you forever. Luke had mentioned the impact of Camp Community to him. We know that by creating opportunities for open dialogue, we can begin to understand and accept better the differences found in other people. We become more empathetic to struggles, needs, and cultural barriers. However, my greatest achievement with MCA has been in recruiting and sponsoring high school students for camp community. My own children were too old for this opportunity and grandchildren were not yet born or too young. Yet the, the more I heard about the experiences of, of these who attended, of those who attended, it helped me realize that I have nieces and nephews and the children of friends of colleagues that I, that I know could help make this opportunity possible. Over the last 12 years, Elia and I have financially sponsored eight students and endorsed several others to attend. Among the youth we have sponsored, we include our own nieces and nephews. Setting a precedent of sending one of our nieces, you're faced with which niece or nephew do you send after the first one? How do you, how do you pick your favorite one? <laughs> you don't. You send them all. <laughs> In fact, uh, uh, Luke, Luke has a twin sister, uh, so I had to, we had to send both. <laughs> it is without exaggeration that those students who participated in camp recount life-changing encounters that strengthen their sense of self, provide an appreciation for differences, set them on a transformative career path in not only their lives, but the lives of those they encounter. I would also tell you that at many of our family gatherings that involved our nieces and nephews sometimes bring about conversation about equity, fairness, justice, and how each one is living the camp community spirit. Amen. Lastly, I believe that inclusiveness is not a current fashion statement. It is the act of opening our arms, hearts, and minds to all people, not some people, but all. It is an adaptive behavior that we must impart on those around to not only cause change, but also force positive change for the future. As I look into the audience, I know that I'm in excellent company of those who also live the mission of building inclusive communities. In closing, I want to say that I'm truly honored to be here tonight. There have been many esteemed others before me who have received this honor, and to be considered in that group is truly humbling. Thank you, and I hope to see you here next year. Al, on behalf of the board of the Multicultural Alliance, we'd like to thank you for promoting our mission 
and supporting everything that we do and every day in your life. And we could not find a better person who exemplifies our mission and what we do than you. Um, and so we'd like to present this award to you and thank you for you everything, everything you do. All right. Thank you, Tim.